So a few years ago, I was watching more and more Qtile videos and decided I wanted to try it out. But it was not available in the Debian repos, so instead of distro hopping, I just built it from source and decided to make a video about it, and you guys really seemed to like it. So now the install process has changed. You know, whether that's for the better is debatable, but whatever. So I thought I would update that video and show how to get it done with the new requirements. And I will not be breaking any packages or installs today. Hopefully. <laughs> Let's get into it. All right, so first I want to start with a minimal install of Debian. And if you want to follow along, I have installed Debian a bunch of times on this channel. And a bunch of the other Linux guys have arguably better Debian install videos than me. So if you want to come back to this video after you install Debian with no desktop environment, because we're doing a minimal thing here, and you're booted to a TTY, you can pick up from here. Now, Debian is super simple to install. And if you want to install with Butterfest subvolumes, I'll leave a link to one of my previous videos up in the cards or down in the video description. I'll also leave some links to some other more different Debian installs if you're interested. However you decide to do it, all the steps from here on out, as long as you're booted to a TTY, from here on out, they'll all be the same. Now, I've taken the liberty of kind of sort of deploying my dot files and installed my version of ST and DMenu and that kind of thing, because I'm not going to make you sit through all that. Other than that, this is bone stock, because I know you guys probably get tired of me, you know, Git cloning my GitLab repos and then deploying all that. You've seen it a hundred times probably by this point. So I'm not going to make you do that. What I want to do now is just go ahead and install some of the dependencies for Qtile. Now to get these dependencies installed, we're just going to use apt to install just about everything. So to start off, let's do sudo apt install xorg, xserver-xorg, Python 3, because Qtile is written and configured in Python, so it would make sense that it's installed. Uh, we also need to install Python 3-pip and Python 3-venv for virtual environment. Because nowadays, with Python 3 and the, all the updates and all that, if you have a Python program installed outside of the repos, it is externally managed and a virtual environment would be kind of sort of required without breaking packages and all that. But the next thing that I want to install is Python 3-v-sim, Python-dbus-dev. Also, I want to install lib Pango iro dash one dot zero dash zero then python three dash x c f f i b python three dash cairo c f f i now you can go ahead and install a bunch of other stuff here if you want to you don't have to do just dependencies so if you want to go ahead and have sound working and everything, you can go ahead and install Pulse Audio or also Utils or whatever, or whatever right now. So right now, I don't really care about volume because this is a VM. What I do want is a file manager and a web browser and that kind of thing. I'm a VIFM guy, so I'm going to install VIFM. And I'm also going to install UberZug just because I have a video about VIFM and I use Ubersug to get image previews. I also want Cute Browser because I've been messing around with Cute Browser a lot and I've really started liking it. I do want X Wallpaper. I want FZF. I want SXIV. And oh, I almost forgot. Oh, more dependencies. Sorry, I, I almost forgot. We also need lib XKB common dash dev and lib xkb common dash x 11 dash dev i almost forgot that because we're we would have some problems if we didn't have those installed when we run our install command all right i'm just going to give that the yy flag 
And I'm going to fast forward through all this and I'll catch back up with you in just a minute. All right, now that, that all that's installed, I want to be able to run an LS here and actually have some output because right now there are no folders. There's no downloads folder, no documents, no nothing. So what I want to do, I want to run xdg-user-ders-update. Now if I run LS, all of my home directory folders are there now. So now I want to cd into my source directory or what have you and run the python3 command to create my virtual environment so i'm going to cd into home slash dot local source if i run an ls you'll see that my suckless software stuff is there dwm is not installed only st and d menu are installed out of this so all i'm going to do here i'm going to run python3 dash m v e n v Qtile underscore V-E-N-V. So all this is doing is creating a virtual environment called Qtile underscore V-E-N-V. It takes a second, and there we are. So if we CD into Qtile V-E-N-V, run an LS, you see we have a bin directory, an include directory, a lib directory, lib64, and pyvnv.cfg. So it's a configuration for this virtual environment. We're not going to mess with any of that. All we're going to do now is clone the Qtile repo from GitHub. Because you can go ahead and do an install for, for Qtile as a Python package, but we're just going to do it from source because that's going to be the newest one, and, well, why not? So let's run git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash Qtile slash Qtile dot git. All that's cloned in, so if we run an ls, you'll see that we have a Qtile directory. So now what we need to run is a pip command to install Qtile. And that pip command is in the bin directory in our virtual environment. So if we cd into bin and run an ls, you'll see that we have a pip and a pip3 and a pip3.11 command. I'm not going to worry about pip3 or pip3.11. I'm just going to run pip. So, let's back up a directory. Let's clear the screen, run an ls. So what I want to run is bin slash pip install qtile forward slash dot because it's in the qtile directory. So I want it to move into that qtile directory and then start. So I'm just going to hit enter here, installing build dependencies. Then we should get a bunch of output. All right, everything should be there. Now, in previous videos, the Qtile binary was in that Qtile directory. In this one, it's going to be in the Qtile environment directory in the bin folder. So now, if we go back to bin and we run an ls, you'll see that we have a Qtile binary here. Now, you can copy it, you can symlink it, you can do whatever. All I'm going to do now is get it into my path. And my path is home slash dot local bin. So cp home slash dot local source Qtile venv bin Qtile to home slash dot local bin. All right. So now Qtile is in our home slash dot local bin, which is in our path. Now we need to have a configuration file for it in our home slash dot config folder. If you've already got one, that's great. You don't have to do this step. If you don't have one and you want a copy of the default config in your home slash dot config Qtile directory. Here's what you do. CP Qtile. Oh, let's back up a directory and CD into Qtile. Now this is the repo that we downloaded. Now where it's going to be is actually in libqtile. 
So I want to copy libqtile and I want it to be in resources and I want the default config.py in home slash dot config qtile config.py. Now I might get an error here. I did get an error here. So let's clear the screen and let's mkdi our home slash dot config slash qtile. Now let's pull up the same command and now it, it was successful. So if we cd back and cd into dot config qtile run an ls, you'll see we have our config.py. So let's nvim config.py. And we have all of our regular stuff here. So the terminal as guest terminal, I'm not doing all that. So let's just change to the end of the line. Add some quotes, st. And here I want to add another one. Let's call it menu. And I want this to be dmenu underscore run dash l 10 for, I want it to be like 10 lines tall. I want it to be centered and I want it to be, I want to have a custom prompt. So let's do dash P and in single quotes, we're going to say launch a program. All right. Now let's come down here to where it's launches a terminal. And we're going to copy that line. So let's yank, paste that in, change that return to a P, and then come over here, change terminal to menu, and then come over here and change launch terminal to launch D menu. We're going to write and quit. All right, so let's CD back. And now that all that's done, we don't have to run make or anything. So let's just reboot. Pseudo reboot and then if I run or then if I log in oh I also need to edit my xnet my xnet rc so nvim dot xnet rc so here I want to run qtile start right and quit that let's clear the screen and then start x now our my resolution is not great so if I hit mod and enter Let's run xrender-s 1920 by 1080. Let's clear that. And mod w to close. Let's run xwp. And for some reason, that is not showing the way I want it to show. Much better. So I want that resolution to be there all the time. So if you saw my XNet RC, so let's NVM, actually let's make the terminal font size way bigger. And then let's NVM.XNetRC. You'll see that it sources an X profile. And that is in my .config directory as well. So if I quit out of this, and then it was actually trying to Pull in my init.vim as well. So let's rm home slash dot config nvim init.vim. All right. So let's cd into home slash dot config x11, run an ls, and there's my x profile file there. So let's nvim x profile. And my 2mon.sh, I want to change that because I don't have two monitors on this. So let's ct ampersand. So that command that I just ran to make the terminal full screen, I want to do xrender-s 1920 by 1080. And xwp sets my wallpaper, dunce, pycom, lxpolkit, xrdb, home slash dot config x resources, and x set r rate. Okay, cool. All that is fine. So let's write and quit that. Let's clear the screen. CD back, and you see that we have a default Qtile environment. So our terminal launches with mod and enter. We can close windows with mod W, and if I wanted to launch D menu now, mod P. CD dot config Qtile nvim config dot pi. And then let's look for 
P right there and looks let's, let's search for default config. Let's get rid of that and right and quit that mod control W. Let's run star X and then mod P. All right, there we go. I had messed up on my spacing and whatnot. And Qtile is very picky about that kind of stuff. So your commas, your spacing and all that is going to be very important in Qtile. But anyway, so now that we have a default config and we have a terminal, we have a, a menu launcher and all that kind of stuff, we can go ahead and start getting some work done. But if you wanted to configure this the way you want it, I am not the best Qtile ricer guy, so I'm going to point you over to the Linuxcast and to DistroTube. Those two are going to be way better at showing you that kind of stuff than I am. And they have some really nice looking Qtile configs. So I'm going to you know pass that off to those guys. So that's about all I've got for today. I just kind of wanted to show the updated process of installing Qtile. And... You know, since it's not in the repos, it's going to have to be built with pip. And now that it's an externally managed thing through Python 3, it has to be done with a virtual environment. Now, there is a way around it where you can remove the externally managed part of it. But they say that that's going to like break system packages and blah, blah, blah. I've done it both ways. This way seems a little safer. The other way, it just warns you a bunch of times. But you can do it either way. Um, I think Drew over at Just a Guy Linux has a way to do it where it, it does kind of break system packages. But that way does work, and it works really well too. So anyway, with all that said, I just kind of wanted to show you the way to do it with a virtual environment. So with all that said, I'm Mike, and you're awesome. I'll catch you in the next one. Later.